A lesson from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 21st chapter beginning at the first verse. When Jesus and his disciples drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethphage, to the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find an ass tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord has need of them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted upon an ass, and on a colt, the foal of an ass." The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the ass and the foal and put their garments on them, and he sat thereon. Most of the crowd spread their garments on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds that went before him and that followed him shouted, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Here endeth the lesson. A lesson from a homily by the Venerable Saint Bede. The ass and the foal on which Jesus sat when he came to Jerusalem represent those with a guileless heart from each of the two peoples, namely the Jews and the Gentiles, directing them and restraining them from harmful freedom of action by his rule. He leads them to the vision of heavenly peace. Jerusalem is interpreted vision of peace. St. Matthew tells us that the disciples brought the ass and the foal and put their garments on them, and Jesus sat thereon. The garments of the disciples are the works of righteousness. As the psalmist testifies when he says, Your priests will clothe themselves with righteousness. The donkeys which the disciples found uncovered, they covered with garments, and so placed our Lord thereon. When holy preachers find any persons at all without the clothing of holiness, they imbue them with examples of their own virtues, so that they gain faith in and love for their Maker. For our Lord did not wish to get on an uncovered donkey, nor did he wish to get on an uncovered foal, because whether Jew or Gentile, unless one be adorned with the sayings and deeds of the saints, he cannot have our Lord as his guide but instead sin reigns in his mortal body to make him obey its concupiscences. Here endeth the lesson. As the Venerable of St. Bede often does, and we spoke a little bit about this last time and maybe the time before that as well, He, along with many, in fact most, if not all, of the Church Fathers, um, routinely look at Scripture and interpret spiritually. Again, it's not to deny the plain, historic, regular meaning at all, but to add to it. And the plain, historical meaning regular meaning of the two donkeys, the ass and 
uh, its foal, are that Jesus rode um, into Jerusalem with the clothes of the disciples on the back of the donkeys and entered into Jerusalem exactly as St. Matthew uh, tells us and, all, and the other evangelists too. And yet what the Venerable St. Bede wants us to do is not only marvel at the story in, indeed divinely enacted and embodied by Jesus our Savior as it happened and as it is recorded. But the Church Fathers and Venerable Bede um, want us also to find ourselves in these narratives. That's the purpose of a spiritual reading or a spiritual interpretation, is to add to the, the thickness of the narrative that we are also participating. And so the, the way then that Bede characterizes and interprets for us this moment in Matthew 21 is not only, of course, that Jesus is riding into Jerusalem where he will um, continue to enter into his passion and be arrested, will be tried, will be crucified, will die, will be buried, and will re be resurrected and ascended. All of that begins um, with Matthew 21, but also that Jesus, as he is now, in a, um, is taking us to the new Jerusalem, which is heaven. That is why he points out that Jerusalem as a word is interpreted, or uh, you might say it, it means in, a, in an etymological or literal sense, Jerusalem is interpreted as vision of peace. It's a bit of a complicated uh, analysis that Bede has, but it, it rests on a verse from the Psalms, your priests will clothe themselves with righteousness. And so because the priests, the disciples, who became the apostles, who gave us the proclamation of the gospel, which is written down as the New Testament, because they are themselves clothed with righteousness, then their taking off of their garments are, and putting them on the donkeys is putting the gospel as it enshrouds them in their lives, as the gospel has transformed their hearts and um, laying them on the two animals. Many church fathers interpret, again, when interpreting spiritually, the two donkeys, the, the, the ass and the foal, one referring to the Jews and the other to the Gentiles. And we heard in uh, the Song of Simeon, the Nunc Dimittis, uh, Simeon praising a light to lighten the Gentiles in the glory of thy people Israel. The two, um, the two peoples that bear the gospel are here seen as the two animals on which he who is the gospel rides. But he doesn't just ride on them, but He's sitting on the clothes of the, the apostles, which is righteousness, which is their preaching of the gospel rooted in their life and how Christ has transformed them. And so Christ here is riding into Jerusalem, the new Jerusalem, as Paul says, which is above, as Paul says, which is our mother. The, the true Jerusalem, the true vision of peace, the journey into heaven. And 
Bede points out that it's not only that Jews and Gentiles, but those among the Jews and Gentiles who have a guileless heart, a pure heart, a heart that is without guile, as Jesus says to about Nathaniel, the beginning of John's Gospel, um, a heart of sincerity, not malice, uh, a heart that is thirsting for righteousness, is seeking for the truth, a heart that is genuinely looking for and wanting relationship with Jesus Christ. And so it is upon such people, including us, that Christ rides. And he's riding upon us because we are covered with the apostles' teaching. Indeed, we are wearing more and more, the apostles' works of righteousness, their own proclamation of the gospel, which is what has clothed them and what they share with all Christians by virtue of the scriptures, to clothe them, that we are, that we then are not the mere uncovered animals, but that we are covered with the the gospel which, which warms us, which uh, gives us clothing. I'm reminded right now of the story of St. Martin of Tours, the soldier who uh, saw a poor man and who was naked and cut half of his cloak and, and so that it could cover this naked man. Well, people without the gospel are naked. People without the gospel, without relationship with Christ, are naked. And so the gospel clothes people who are uh, pure and, and trying to be pure and seeking Christ and wanting relationship with, with him, us included. So where does all this leave us? Because this is the image that Bede has for us in in our reflection. And I think again, we're back to our Lord's insistence that members of his body abide in his words, that abide in his teachings, keep his words, his teachings close in our hearts and in our minds. We are in Holy Week. We are in the most important week of the Christian year by far. It's the week that all the rest of the year revolves around because in this time we are participating in the central realities of the life of our Lord Jesus Christ and participating in the central realities of our faith. And so this week, as we are clothed with the gospel accounts of our Lord, let us allow Christ to ride upon us. Let us allow Christ to direct us because the person sitting on the donkey directs where the donkey goes. Let us allow Christ to direct us as he is leading us into the vision of peace, which is the true Jerusalem. Let us allow his passion. Let us allow him to guide us into the true realities of his passion. That we are not trying to make Jesus go where we want him to go, but that we will follow him as he goes from station to station to station in his passion. That as we follow him and allow him to lead us, we are abiding in his sacrifice. 
that we are allowing his sacrifice to fill us. A sacrifice which is difficult to bear. A sacrifice which is at times quite gruesome. And yet, within this gruesomeness, within this difficulty that our, that our Lord chose to willingly engage in and perform for us and for our salvation, we are promised by him and by the apostles who proclaimed him, whose proclamations clothe us, keep us warm, so that we are not naked at this time, but rather we feel the warmth of the gospel as Christ is entering into his passion, going station to station to station. We are promised by him that true glory is found when we walk the ways of the cross. True glory is found, and indeed our true self is found as we walk the stations of the cross or allow Jesus to direct us as he rides upon us, rides upon our heart, rides upon the beast of our heart, which is a battleground between God and Satan, that he can tame our heart so as to be taken by him deeper and deeper into the path of glory towards the vision of peace, the vision of our Lord, not only on the cross, but on the cross in his glory. And not only on the cross in his glory, but resurrected, and not only resurrected, but ascended to the right hand of the Father, with whom he lives and reigns along with the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen.